was so scared when I started. I was so, so scared. Because when I started working with MI, I was 21. And this guy was 27. And I was telling him things yeah. you should be doing. Yeah. You know, I had to sort of step into that role. But I was really scared. I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. Everything I thought I was doing. And this is where I started feeling like these guys didn't even rate us at all. So you go and sit down. I sat at a bank. I'm not going to mention their name. I sat at their reception for three hours to pick up a 300,000 naira check because we needed it. <laughs> I sat there for three hours and, you know, you begin to feel like you're dealing with the brands and then the artists start getting successful and then you have to deal with them as well. It's like, it's almost as if, okay, this guy doesn't even read the work I'm doing. And, yeah. and, and so, but as you get older, you begin to understand how to deal with it. But how did you deal with overcoming that whole mindset that this person doesn't even rate me? Mm. Okay. For, okay, okay. 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 I think for me, okay. I saw I'm like, my case is a very special case mm-hmm. because before I actually managed my first artist full time, I had worked with artists a lot. So I seen artists leave storm, join storm, beg to join storm, yeah, fight to storm. So I understood it to a certain extent. And then bear in mind, like the first clients who was now my responsibility was my, I won't say when we and I started working with the best of friends, but we knew each other, we had a million mutual friends. So, and at that point in time, in my circle of friends, anything entertainment wise, was like, okay, talk to Issa. So I had that little clout to an extent where it was kind of a thing where like, Issa can do this or Issa can help you. So I never really had the issue where like I had to like really convince David. Like I think till today, there are very few occasions where David and I have a situation where David will be like, "This thing doesn't make sense," and he's never going. We never had a situation where like this thing doesn't make sense. That is solution. There's never. I'm, I've I've been lucky where like, for example, with David, where I've never had a situation where like, you know, there's some artists that would be like, "I'm not doing this." Okay, I'm not doing it. Why? Mm. What's the solution? What's the backup plan? I've, I've I've had a few of those, but I've been lucky. Yeah. Like at times when like something will happen, I'll be like, "Bro, we are so fucked." Like, <laughs> there's no. I, I remember sometimes I'll be like, "Bro, I do not even know how we are going to bounce back." And I say to you all the time, "I'm like, bro, I don't know the spirit that follows you because some other guys, if they did this, the end is a wrap." Yeah. <laughs> and like I see other, I see how other artists relate with their managers. And sometimes I'm like, bro, are you this guy's PA or his actual manager? And in the defense to managers before us, mm. and in our defense actually, managers before us were quote unquote managers. So pretty much just booking agents, yeah. PAs, whatnot. So that, and that's why one of the reasons why I see like the next generation coming after us. I don't know that to myself in this generation or the other generation. Well, in all the generations. <laughs> yeah. <But laughs> the guys, the younger guys. I look here because I think we've been the first generation to actually like finesse it and make it an actual career and business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For same because like it's for like for example like the record label like artist A leaves this label it's not the end of the label. Yeah. It might take a hit but you continue moving. The manager loses the clients. He has other clients. Yeah. Moving. Like I remember when I first was, um, stopped working with David the first time. In the beginning I was like, bro, this is the end of my life. <laughs> like the first like month I was like, bro. I just worked this hard. I made this guy a superstar. Mm-hmm. I'm not about to enjoy it. <laughs> but and, but and that's the thing I tell people all the time. Like, it's like how you said with the whole glow thing. For yeah. example, when people see what you can do after that whole initial, initial panic thing, thing, literally everybody called me. Oh, come and help me do this. Come and help me do this. I was like, right, I'm more than fine. And, <laughs> and it allowed me to realize the mistake I've been making and like structure my own business yeah. and come back because it's like now for, like um, Scooter Brown says all the time it's like Justin Bieber was so big at one point in time that when Justin took a break off of music that allowed him to grow his own business it's very rare that you hear somebody manages both Arena Grande and Justin Bieber yeah. if you don't have the structure of the business it's impossible yeah. mm-hmm. like now we have multiple clients like like in between like I might scenario again is special because I have a very understanding business partner yeah so I can be in America for six months with David and the other guys are fine. We have Sam who has evolved into Something. his own. So it's kind of thing where, and these things can't happen if us managers are not helping each other, yeah. doing our research, 
you know the generation before us. Hello, like, man. Leave me alone, John. I'm busy. I know how many times I've called. I won't even Several say people. Yeah, Some people. people like, I'm trying to do this. I want to do this. And you get the two quote unquote normal Niger old man treatment. But I don't think four managers from the generation can sit down like this and talk. Or three managers is impossible. Mm. Every everything that we've, I think everything that we and other people like on the same like would i say this generation have done we pretty much had to build on our own yeah. Yeah. Jigger from scratch everything that i know as a manager or about entertainment business i've had to learn and experience myself yeah, yeah. no one you know you know no one um held my hands to show me that oh this is this is okay when you're writing a proposal for brands this is how you write it when you step into, into I needed I needed to get a brand get, send my email back to me to say what's this rubbish. You get, you know, nobody, <laughs> no one tells you that. Oh, when you you know this is how you get your music played on radio or how you you know so you, like we had to do everything yeah, on had, our own. Yeah, had everything on our but own. also I think I feel like even with one of the things we did better was and we did sooner was that we got to a point where it became a business. Mm-hmm. For most people, it was like, okay, this is just money, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Was well, this is just a means to an end? But for most of us, we thought about it from a, and this is what I, what I mean by them rating us. I remember when I stopped working with Mi the first time, all the guys that were in brands that were my friends mm. stopped picking my calls, yeah. and then, and I keep telling people that my life changed when we stopped working with me, mm-hmm. because the first time it happened with Mi, I didn't pay attention to it. I wasn't aware. Mm-hmm. Then I was working with Wiz. This time, I had everybody wanted to book Wiz, mm-hmm. and so I had relationships with uh, mul- most brands. Kind of everybody thing. wanted to yeah. talk to me. When Wiz and I stopped working, the way they started ignoring my calls was it was <laughs> it was unbelievable. But I think it was at that point that I, the same way as Asa said, he felt when he stopped working mm-hmm. with David because I remember, yes, I was, you know. We've, it's water under the bridge now, mm-hmm. right? So, but initially I was angry, but then I got scared. I was like, ah, this is my cash cow. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do next? And then all of a sudden, as he said, like a couple of months after that initial panic, calls started coming in. We want mm-hmm. you to do this for us. Mm-hmm. So I feel that was when I now decided to 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 take it seriously. Yeah, yeah. But I, I also feel like we need to start teaching these guys yeah. coming in, like, look, if you are sitting down mm-hmm. at 2 p.m. on Tuesday playing video game with your artist, <laughs> if he gets hungry, you are the one he's sending to, to buy food. Buy, to buy right? food. If, you're, if you're finding business, <laughs> it's going to be hard for him to say, even if there are people around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over time, when he knows that this person is busy, even when you're hanging out, yeah. he, you're not the first option yeah. to do that. There's an argument we like to have as managers, which is... People need to treat managers better. Managers are not assistants, but you have to give value for it people to, to be, treat you has that to be way. Value, yeah. And then um, when when like okay, they don't rate us. When an artist like an artist who has looked up to you and depended on you, yeah, you know, for a couple of years, and then he blows up, and then you call him and it takes like the third call for him to yeah. pick up your call, or you have to call the person in the house for him to reply your WhatsApp message. At that point, you have to ask yourself, like, why is this happening? Yeah. Either the person is an idiot or you're simply not adding yeah. any value. value. Yeah. Do you get? And in most cases, it's always value. Yeah. It's always that, okay, business is coming in now easily. So the manager now is now comfortable just taking calls and replying emails. The manager is not looking for, for new business, new, business, new opportunities. New opportunities yeah. and everything. So as a manager, like, it's, it's very important, like, for the young guys to always... Like you always reassess. Yeah. Like so, when a relationship ends for me with an artist, yeah, it's usually like a wake up call for me. So it's like, okay, that that phase is over. What's next? Sometimes, yeah. yeah sometimes I'm praying relationship ends. No, yeah. plus sometimes like it's, yeah. it's like I think I think the most heartbreaking for me yeah. was with Jigget, but then it also made me more sh- as in like it gave me reassurance. Like yeah. hey, this is what you were made to do you yeah. get, and you were not made to manage one person yeah you get what you can do you can do with you yeah. get with different habits. but i also tell i also tell people sometimes you need to go through the process mm-hmm. of course. right mm-hmm. so find you know you can do multiple things but if you have an artist that you say look i'm building it's easier when you've built 
a solution mm -hmm. when you've yeah. created a, a solution, solution then it's easy to pick you can now say okay i know the solution i can create i can duplicate it for In multiple people yeah.